Hi guys, welcome to the French Grip episode. Today we're going to work on the finger motion. Why is the finger motion an important thing in drumming? As we all know, the faster we want to play, the smaller the muscles that we involve in the motion should be. So, for example, when we do an arm motion, we use a big muscle. So, at one point, it will start to get stiff and we have to shift to wrist motion, and which are smaller muscles. And once we go from wrist motion to finger motion, we're going to use even smaller muscles. So, we're, we'll, we will go faster. Uh, this is a physical law because it's just um, the way how everything works. Like an elephant, it's slower than a cat because it has it's bigger, it has more mass to, to carry. So the same thing ha uh, happens in our body. So bigger muscles will have just a certain limit of speed and then we have to shift to smaller, uh, smaller muscles. Sometimes I see drummers playing uh, using the French, um, using the finger motion with the German grip. But uh, when I try to assume this position with my hand, I can feel like some tension here. And so for this reason, I prefer not to do this kind of motion because I'm afraid that in time this will, can damage my, um, my body. So I'd rather just switch to this motion, which doesn't really hurt, doesn't do anything, it's perfectly comfortable and so I shifted from a German to a French grip. Of course working on the finger doesn't benefit only the speed but also the control that we have in holding the stick. Let's see why. So the difference in holding the stick from the German position to the French position is that we just basically put our thumb looking upwards instead of laterally. So nothing really changes on how we actually hold the stick. We just turn our hand in this position so that our thumbs look upwards and we can completely take advantage of this motion that if we would do in this position won't, wouldn't be possible of course. So this is the best way to hold the stick. Having the thumb a little bit over the index finger, this is because the actual motion it's gonna be this one. Okay, so where these four fingers are gonna do the pushing motion and the thumb it's gonna be a lever. Okay, so having the thumb a little bit more in front will help us in making this motion happening. A lot of people tend to use the uh, to hold the stick here, having the index and the thumb very close to each other and sometimes this causes the fact that we tend to not to take advantage of the ribbon but to raise the stick on our own so and this is something that we don't want to happen okay when we use the French grip there isn't a real fulcrum the only way the stick stays in our hand is through the rebound, is through keeping it in motion. If not, this won't be, mm, the French grip wouldn't be possible, wouldn't happen. Okay, so this is very important, this is the first step. Thumb a little bit more in front of the index finger and then the rest of the hand that lays on the stick in this way. And then, let's always keep in mind that this is the motion and not this. Why lifting the stick? It's, I wouldn't say a mistake, but will make things harder for us. If we have to raise the stick each time for each stroke, this will only make us work more. Instead, if we take advantage of the rebound, pulling the stick back up, we never have to pull the stick up and we never feel the weight of the stick. We just push it down by squeezing our fingers, right? So this is why having this position of the hand is so important and this is why we don't want this to happen. If there's no rebound with the finger motions, it should be impossible to make it happen. It's all based on the rebound. Even because the finger muscles are so, are micro muscles, so are so 
thin and so small that if we have to think of lifting the stick for six strokes per second, that will be a lot of work for micro muscles. So it's better to let the rebound pull the stick back up and we just have to push it down. So at this point, we have to learn how to take advantage of the rebound. Another common mistake that I see is that people tend to, since they want to go fast, they tend to have a very small dynamic range when they play with the French grip and they tend to choke the rebound. And that's because we think of the pressing down, the squeezing motion more than the opening. Instead, the more we open these four fingers, the more space the stick will have to rebound, the more we will take advantage of the rebound itself, and the louder, so the more powerful we will be, the faster we will also be. Because if we choke the stick, if we choke the rebound, it's going to become only a nervous motion that will kind of go on and off without control. It's just going to be something like that we have no control of instead of knowing exactly how to deal with the rebound and how to control the stick. So working on a wider dynamic range of motion even with the fingers is very important because it helps us to have more control and the more space we give, the faster we can go. So if our 220 BPM is this much of range motion, we can go over that. So that's going to be our limit. Instead, if we add some space to that uh, BPM, it means that we can close a little bit our range of motion, and that means that the strokes will be even closer to each other. So if our 200 B, uh, 220 BPM is this wide, 240 will be this, 260 will be this, 280 will be... Does it make sense? So the more space we give, the faster we can play. Space and times are connected, so a lot of space, a lot of time. Little space, little time. Little time means faster. That means little time, there's a little time between one stroke and another, which means that they're happening very close to each other. So more strokes in one minute and that's how you speed up so we have to think of not only the squeeze motion but also the opening motion when we do this kind of uh, motion so actually the way I practice is not thinking of this but it's thinking of opening which is exactly the same thing of when we follow the rebound back that we think of the up motion our up motion with the wrist it can be compared to our opening of the hand. Does that make sense? So at this point it's very important to understand that we have to completely isolate the wrist from the finger motion. It shouldn't be a half wrist, half finger motion, but it should be a completely only finger motion. This is because we want to improve our fingers and not cheat ourselves to just become faster. If our fingers can only reach 240 BPMs and we want to go faster than that, adding the wrist motion won't improve the finger motion. It's just a way to cheat ourselves to reach the speed that we want to, but our finger motion will always stay at 240 BPMs. So we want to really isolate that and work on our limits. And so really making sure that the wrist is completely not involved and when we reach our limit then that's where the, the workout starts so that's when we have to start figuring out what's happening that's preventing us to go faster for example if we're doing too much press motion and we don't we're not opening our hand enough if we're moving our thumb and raising the, the stick on our own or if we're doing the right thing and just keeping the thumb as a lever, if our hand is actually fast enough and so we can then play at a certain speed because if of course our body is not prepared and doesn't have a certain speed on its own without the stick, 
that's already a limit, so we have to actually work on um, coordinating this motion without involving the wrist. Okay, so let's make sure that our preparation is actually uh, at a level that can sustain this kind of motion. If that's not happening already, then that's the first step we have to go and work on. Our body. Okay, without the stick, without anything, just this. And then apply this motion to the stick. And make sure that what we do without the stick and with the stick, it's exactly the same thing. And that we only deal with the, sp the stick in our hand. And that we don't change completely our way of uh, um, moving and, and doing the French grip. The finger motion benefits speed and control, but sacrifices dynamics. Using such small muscles will make it impossible to have a dynamic like when we play a wrist motion or an arm motion. Of course, because even the range of motion is not as wide as just the range that uh, a wrist can give you. Like a wrist can also almost give you 180 degrees, a finger motion can't. Okay, so um, as we already know, the faster we go, the more we will have to sacrifice hitting hard, which doesn't mean that our volume will decrease. Okay, it just means that there's less. Um, power, less violence in our uh, playing uh, and if it's needed it's okay, it's good to be a complete drummer and uh, to have all the weapons for every situation so uh, when we have to when we can play with a wrist at a, a certain speed and we can do that, that's great, but then if the band or the, the, the situation we're in requires even more, it's good to be prepared and be like, okay, yeah, I can do this. Even though maybe it's not your type of playing, um, it's still something good to have. If we want to go to 280, 290, 300 BPMs, we have to switch and shift to the finger motion. In fact, I mostly use the French grip to go from fast to faster. So from let's say 260 BPMs to 300, 290, 280. Even though in my playing I don't like playing the, the sound that a 300 BPM blast beat makes because it's just too fast and there's not even the time for the note to develop and so it just sounds like uh, noise. So, but that's my musical um, opinion, so it's just something that for me doesn't work as a musician. But I can still, when, uh, for example, I played with Vital Remains, they required speeds such as 290 BPMs, and so I had to work on this finger motion and play at those speeds, because their music required that, and that was my job, so I did it. So let's break down this finger motion and let's see in details all the steps that we have to face to make this grip right. The first thing that we will notice is that when we start the first stroke we never start just by using our fingers and pushing the stick with our fingers but we will start with an arm stroke okay as we usually do the first stroke is just letting the arm fall and then from there we will have to control with the fingers. So in the first stroke what I do it's a kind of a push-pull with the fingers so as the stick hits the surface I open my hand so that I then can control the stick only with the fingers. So I let the I open my hand so the opposite of what we usually do with the wrist we open the hand so that we find ourselves in this situation when where we have to just then squash the um, squeeze the fingers and have the push motion of the the French grip. So having this push pull is very helpful.
After this, of course, we have to, so we accept the rebound in this part, and we just have to um, maintain the rebound. So, as I was saying before, uh, we will have to work on the opening of the hand and not only the squeezing part. So here my concentration goes in opening the hand and not pressing down so that I don't uh, reduce the dynamic and I don't end up doing a nervous squish pressing motion but I have a good range of control and of motion. Another good thing is to use this part of our hand and not be too much in front because we don't want to end up using this part but we actually want to take advantage of all the fingers and sometimes we end up doing a very uh, weird motion um, because it's instinctive to our brain to make us do that motion but instead we have to educate to use this part so that um, we are more elastic in the motion and there's more again more range of motion and not just a very limited um, range of motion that this part of the finger allow us to have. So let's now see a few workouts that we can do to work on the French grip. We can use heavier sticks to get used to the rebound. Uh, these are aluminium sticks that I um, often use and I don't use them to become stronger but I use them to feel if I'm doing the right things because if I will lift the stick or do anything wrong with this I will feel it straight away because they're so heavy that you will just feel it you will get tired after five strokes instead if I'm doing the right things I'm not I won't feel the weight of the stick and it means that I'm completely synchronized with the rebound and what I'm doing is correct so I suggest you to um, use heavy sticks for one part of the exercise. I usually start uh, with heavier sticks so that um, then I will just correct all the things that I have to correct and then go on my regular drumsticks. So the first workout is going to be playing two measures for each hand, so eight strokes for each hand so that we work on accepting the rebound and then maintaining the first strokes which is the harder part to um, work on uh, most of the times we have we tend to start in in a weird way kind of choking the rebound and then after one bar or something having the the rebound back so it's good to instead be prepared from the first stroke and so this this workout will allow us to actually work on that and uh, um, really focus only on the first part, on the in injection part of this uh, the, the French grip. So let's work on accepting the rebound with the French grip. So let's remember to do the kind of a push-pull after the first stroke and then to isolate completely the wrist from uh, the finger motion so that we don't involve the wrist and it's clearly only a finger motion French grip uh, and not any kind of weird motion. Then we can go back and using our regular sticks and do the same exercise.
Of course, it's gonna feel much better with your regular sticks than with heavier sticks, but um, with the heavy sticks, you can really feel all the mistakes, so it's a great way of uh, really working on this uh, on this grip. Um, another suggestion that I give you is to um, focus the push of these four fingers with the middle fingers finger because it's the finger that has bigger muscles compared to all these four fingers. So the middle finger has to be like the main uh, part of the push of these four fingers of this part of the hand. So let's think of the middle finger when we do this exercise more than other uh, the other fingers. But let's also make sure that we don't only push with a few fingers, but we actually use all the four fingers to do this motion. If not, we will just take advantage of two fingers out of four, which means that we give more work to just a few part of our hand and will um, will make it more difficult. It will be more difficult for us to reach to, to stay relaxed and, and reach certain speeds for a long period of time because we're stressing one part of the hand instead of having all the work um, divided uh, on all fingers, which of course it's gonna be uh, easier and will keep us more relaxed. The second workout it's going to be playing from slow to fast and then back to slow with right hand, left hand, unison and alternate it. Of course uh, we're going to, to divide this f one minute for each um, hand and then one minute unison and one minute alternated. Um, and we'll go from slow to fast, back to slow, back to fast in this 60 seconds. So let's see how this works. Then we can go back on our regular wood sticks.
another good exercise is to just keep um, the stick bouncing at a comfortable speed for 60 seconds so that we build our uh, comfort zone um, we build a speed and a, and a dynamic that we know that it's not going to we're not gonna make any effort to, to do this we're just comfortable in keeping this uh, in all the ways so unison and alternate it also and then another great exercise is to work on each finger so the thumb and the index finger are always going to stay in contact and then we will alternate the other three fingers one bar for each finger so something like this So we make sure we really use all the fingers that um, we have and we don't just use a couple of them and we train all the muscles of the hand and so we will gain a lot of control, speed and also power for the French group. So have a good practice and I'll see you next week.